how long after you wake up should you wait before you have coffee? Well, I'm going to give you the answer in this video, but I'm also going to give you the breakdown of when you should be consuming your coffee or caffeine throughout the course of the day for the best fat loss result, the best mental result, and the overall just best physiological result. So we're gonna get down to the science and you're gonna know exactly when to drink that cup of joe. Hey, you're watching the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and overall optimization channel. Make sure you keep it locked in here for videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. And hit that little bell button to turn on notifications. And also check out highleat.com to see the premium performance apparel that I'm always wearing in my videos. All right, so you wanna know when to be drinking your coffee. Well, believe it or not, it actually makes a big difference if you drink it at a specific time after waking. It's called chronopharmacology, okay? And chronopharmacology is simply the actual time in which you take a substance, or in this case, caffeine. Now, chronopharmacology actually makes a huge difference on the overall properties of any substance or any compound or any drug. It makes a very big difference because we're talking about different things like the circadian rhythm. We're talking about different hormonal fluctuations throughout the day. It can make a big, big difference. And in the case of caffeine, we talk about cortisol specifically. So I'm not sure if you knew this, but right when you wake up in the morning, your cortisol levels are pretty much at their highest, and it's a natural process. It's something that we want. You see, cortisol is gonna allow our blood pressure to get up. It allows our fight or flight response to get going. It essentially allows us to get up and get active and get started with the day. Now, another thing we have to remember is that caffeine has also been shown to drastically increase cortisol levels. So what we're doing is when we first wake up, we're consuming caffeine because it's our natural process. But what we're doing is we're adding caffeine and extra cortisol on top of something that's already elevated. So we already have our cortisol levels elevated and we're adding more caffeine and more cortisol to the mix. What this is gonna mean is it's gonna allow us to develop a stronger tolerance to that, meaning that we're gonna need more and more and more over time. You see, one of the key principles of pharmacology in the first place is to use a substance or a compound when you need it. So what's interesting is that we psychologically feel that we need coffee right when we wake up because it's just what's been ingrained in our minds as a habit. But physiologically, it's actually when we don't need coffee. You see, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to wait about an hour after you wake up. Now, I understand that this is not always practical and it's not the end all be all. This isn't necessarily the gospel. It's just what you might wanna consider. If you wake up and you allow your cortisol levels to come back down and then you have coffee, you're allowing the coffee to do a much better job. You see, if you consume coffee and you have this big cortisol rush along with already existing cortisol levels being high, basically what you're doing is you're developing an addiction and developing a tolerance that's not doing a whole lot for your body. And I'm gonna reference a study here in a little bit that helps this all make sense. But essentially, consuming coffee when you already have high levels of cortisol is gonna give you a bigger crash and it's gonna make it so that you're gonna need more and more and more to elicit the same desired response. And as someone that loves coffee, I love my caffeine, I love my coffee, I wanna make sure that when I'm consuming it, I'm getting the benefit of it and not just consuming it for the sake of consuming it. So let's take a look at a study that was published in the Journal of Psychosomatic Medicine. So this study took a look at 48 men and 48 women. And what it had them do was go through periods of time with caffeine and without caffeine. So the way that they broke it down, just to make it simple, is they had them go five days with a very controlled caffeine intake via caffeine capsules. Okay, so they went five days either consuming zero, 300, or 600 milligrams of caffeine. Very controlled at three specific times throughout the day. Then on the sixth day, they gave those subjects 750 milligrams of caffeine and they measured their overall cortisol tolerance, okay? Then they had them go five days with no caffeine. Basically, they were trying to clear the slate. Five days, completely abstaining from caffeine. On the sixth day, they had them consume 750 milligrams of caffeine again. They tested them again, but this time after five days of no caffeine. But what was interesting was that after the five days of being on the caffeine, on the sixth day when they did the test, they found that the overall cortisol response from the caffeine was gone. The caffeine no longer had an effect on cortisol, which might sound like a good thing because cortisol has a bad rap, but in this case, it's kind of a bad thing. It meant that no longer was caffeine really doing anything in the morning. However, it was still doing something in the afternoon and in the evening, which is kind of interesting. Okay, then what they found was that after five days of not having caffeine at all, okay, so completely abstaining and then testing with caffeine, they found then it was a robust increase in cortisol. So everything came back. So what this tells us is that if we're consistently having caffeine along with our cortisol spike in the morning, we develop a tolerance. 
but if we have it without that actual relationship to that cortisol response in the body naturally, we can end up getting by a lot further without having a diminished result. This is good for us coffee lovers. It means that if we actually time our coffee and time our caffeine, we can get by with having more. This is good news for me because I love my coffee. So essentially what you're going to want to do is you're going to wake up in the morning, you want to wait an hour, have your caffeine, and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to go through the rest of your day and then you're going to have lunch. And you're going to wait an hour after lunch and then have your caffeine again. Because why? You also have a cortisol response that happens midday. And most people end up having caffeine right with their lunch and they end up having their caffeine with their cortisol response again. I'm telling you right now, by doing so, you're not getting all the benefits of your coffee. Flat out, you're not getting nearly as much of the fat mobilization effect. You're not getting the catecholamine response like the adrenaline, the norepinephrine. So just take my word for this and you'll actually have some better results. Now you might be wondering too, how does caffeine actually affect your sleep? Well, there's a study that was published in the Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine that took a look at caffeine and its perception of how it affected sleep. So what they did is they took a look at 12 test subjects and they had them consume caffeine either zero, three, or six hours before bedtime. Okay. They found that the caffeine that was consumed zero and three hours before bedtime had a dramatic effect on the sleep. Okay? They also found that consuming caffeine six hours before bedtime had a very profound effect on sleep as well. But what was interesting is that the test subjects only perceived a change in their sleep at caffeine intake zero and three hours before bed. They didn't perceive any change when they had caffeine six hours before bed, even though the data showed otherwise. So making it very simple, if you went to bed at 8 p.m. and you had caffeine at 2 p.m., you would tell yourself that you slept just fine, that you didn't have any effect. But the sleep data actually shows that six hours prior to bed, you do have an effect on your sleep in a negative way. So how do we combat this? Again, caffeine an hour after we wake up, an hour after lunch, and then after that, switch it over to something lower caffeine and you're gonna have a much less profound effect on your sleep, therefore allowing you to get back in that cycle better so you can again, get more out of your caffeine. So I know this is a little bit of a complex topic and talks about this whole chronobiology and chronopharmacology, but if you'd like to know a little bit more about the timing of certain foods and the timing of certain compounds, make sure you put them down in the comment section below and I can answer them in one of my Q&A videos or just a future topic in general. I'll see you in the next video.